Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple different ultrasonic cleaners. Uh, one of them I've had for quite some time and to be honest I've not been very impressed with it. And this one I just got a week or two ago off Amazon. So let's rip this thing open, take a look at it, and then we're going to do a direct side-by-side -side comparison of the two and see which one works better or if they're both junk. All right, let's get this thing opened up. The other brand that I have is the, I think it's Central Machinery, whatever the Harbor Freight brand is. <clears throat> um, that one is not very big, and I've used it for multiple things. And while it, it does work, it just doesn't seem to work very well. And I'm also just not a fan of the controls on that one. So hoping this one is going to treat me a little bit better. So I was a little bit concerned about the condition of this when I received the package because it did have several large dents in the side of it, but um, looks like it was surrounded by enough foam that hopefully um, it's not going to be too dented up or anything like that. But let's get it out of the package and look. So here's everything that the unit comes with. You have your standard parts basket, a length of drain hose, your instruction manual. Looks like there's a hose clamp in there for the drain hose. Uh, warning sticker that I'm probably going to throw on the cover. Just says that you're not supposed to run the unit at less than two-thirds capacity. Um, your standard three-prong HP style power cord. And it looks like a little cage for maybe small parts, something like that. Uh, if you're doing like carburetors and whatnot, could throw your jets in here and then toss them into the cleaner instead of leaving them loose. And then the drain valve looks like it's pretty standard, nothing special. Just looks like a little brass ball valve. Hopefully that doesn't leak. Uh, we'll find out here in a minute. So on the front here we have our digital display. Looks like on the left here we have our temp settings and on the right we have the timer settings for the ultrasonic portion itself and then just another little warning section telling us not to rip the thing apart. Um, to poke around on the inside of it. I have heard some horror stories, uh, read some reviews on Amazon about some of the control boards being junk right out of the box, the display is not working, things like that. Hopefully we won't run into any of those problems, but let's plug it in and find out. And so before I plug it in, just wanted to give you a quick shot of the spec label on the back there and mention that this is the 15 liter model. The Harbor Freight version that I had bought before this one um, was definitely way too small, so I decided to get something a little bit bigger this time. So there's a quick shot of the two units side by side. I will go into more detail about the things that I don't like about the Harbor Freight unit in a minute. Um, but right off the bat there, you can see it's quite a bit smaller. Um, and then the heat and timing function on the Harbor Freight unit, I think has a max of like 400 seconds or something like that. Um, the increment that you can operate it anyway is relatively small compared to the Viver. Um, I believe that one you can run the timer for up to a half an hour on it. Let's get some cleaning solution in there, toss some parts in them, and then see how they do compared to each other. For a cleaning solution, I'm just going to run some simple green degreaser, and I'm going to try to run about the same ratio in both units. We'll see how close I can get. And I am using preheated water. Uh, I've heard that the heating unit on the Beaver is not quite up to par, and if you use cold water right off the bat, it takes a while for it to get up to temperature. Well, here are our test subjects. These are some Mikuni carbs out of a 1995 uh, Skidoo Summit 583. Um, this one we're gonna toss into the Harbor Freight unit. And yeah, it, it does fit in there, but it's not completely submerged. And according to the max fill line on there, um, you can't completely submerge that one without going past the max fill line. So we'll have to rotate that one halfway through. And this is the other one going to be a real test for the Viva unit. Uh, the slide is actually froze up in here. I can't get it free. Um, so we'll see if that can, uh, can break that loose. Um, this sled's been sitting out in the weather for God knows how long. Uh, the guy that I got it from, I think, said 10 years. So these are, at least on the outside, some of the worst carbs I've ever seen. I've not even tried to open them up yet. Um, just kind of thought that the bowls would be froze on and everything else. So let's give them some time in here and see what happens. So right off the bat, I already love that. I can fit the entire carburetor in here, even with that additional slide and the cabling still attached to it. So that's awesome. 
All right, so we got both units plugged in, got the covers on, and you can see on the Harbor Freight unit, the cover actually doesn't sit level on there with the carburetor in there. So overall, like I said, this unit is just way too small for what I need it for. Let's get the Viver powered on and see if the display lights up. So it looks like our display is working pretty well. Our temp side says that we're set to 50 degrees Celsius and our actual is reading 21. So that's, that's probably pretty accurate um, based off of the warm water that I had from the house. Um, and then over here on our timer, we're set to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna bump that up to the full half hour and then we'll try and run the Harbor Freight one for a half an hour as well. I'm just gonna have to sit here and babysit it just because like I said, that one only runs for like a minute and a half at a time or two minutes, whatever it is. So I think we'll leave that at 50. Go ahead and hit the on button and our on light comes on. And then I will go ahead and turn on the ultrasonic portion as well. And I'm sure the camera's gonna pick up on that, so you guys are probably about to hear some nasty sounds. All right guys, let's check these out and see how they did. I can tell you that this one just seems a hell of a lot more powerful than the Harbor Freight unit. Uh, this one is just offensive to the eardrums. This one you can't even hear running with this one off. I mean, I'll just turn this back on and let you guys have a listen here. And that's the other thing, like I said, this one you can only set to 480 seconds for a maximum um, in increments of being on, but like that, I mean, honestly, standing here in person, I don't know how it sounds on camera, but I can barely hear that. And this one, I almost have to leave the shop. It's just, it's, it's very loud and you can feel it on the inside of your head, at least I can. But to me, I, I kind of wanted that because to me that's telling me that it's working. Um, I ran these for about 50 minutes each. I had to step away for a little bit, so to be honest, the central machinery one probably ran a little bit less time than the Viver one did, but pretty similar, probably around 50 minutes each. And if you can see here on the display, we did get up to our 50 degrees Celsius target on the heater. It did take a while for it to get to that point. Um, we started off around 20 degrees Celsius, and it, I'd say it probably took the full 50 minutes for us to get up to that uh, 50 degrees Celsius set point. All right, we're gonna check on the Viver first, just because I mean, yeah, let's not drip water all over the electrical uh, extension cord there. Um, yeah, we're gonna start with this one first just because I'm extremely curious about it. Um, just wondering how good it's gonna do. And keep in mind, this is with zero pre-cleaning whatsoever. Yeah, so as dirty as that was, if you guys remember, putting that in there, I'll maybe add in a before shot here. That is pretty amazing. And look at that. Freed our slide right up. There's a little bit of, it almost looks like rust. I wonder if we had water get in there or something like that. But yeah, so the side that was down in the solution is like damn near, like that's, <laughs> that's pretty much perfect. That looks like factory clean to me. Um, the side that was up, a little bit of dirt left on there. To a little bit of a closer view here. Yeah, water level is probably up to about here. Um, just the end of the idle adjustment knob was sticking out. So I'd imagine if we stick this side down in the fluid and then run it again, um, it's probably gonna come out just as clean. Which I think is what we're gonna do. Now that that's freed up, I wanna set this one back in here. Um, I'm gonna flip it over, set it that side down, and oops, getting water all over the place here. I could probably take these guys out because I want to make a little bit of extra room in there because I know we're going to have to throw uh, that carb in here as well because there's no way that the central machinery cleaner did as good of a job. But let's check and see what kind of a job it did do. All right, so as a comparison, this was the side that was down in the central machinery unit. It's not terrible, it did something, but nowhere near as clean as the Viver got it. And the beautiful part about this 15 liter unit is look at that, I can fit both carbs in there side by side. And I bet there's probably room to throw the cable set back in there too. Which, I mean, if I'm gonna run it and there's room, why not? It's not gonna hurt it, right?
And keep in mind, this is just running simple green degreaser. There's no ultrasonic cleaning media in here, which I believe is a thing that exists. I don't remember. I think there's some sort of like, uh, it's almost like baking soda or baking powder or something like that. Some sort of fine grip material that you can actually put in here um, that increases the agitation and breaks up uh, stuck on grease, dirt, stuff like that a little bit more. I have seen that before. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this thing off because it's practically useless. And I gotta say, I'm probably gonna end up throwing that thing away. Maybe I'll keep it as a backup, but uh, extremely impressed with this so far. So I'm gonna run this a little bit longer, um, get the outsides of both of these as cleaned up as I possibly can. Might even take a toothbrush to them real quick and just break up that last remaining um, dirt that's on there. It's really not much. So if I can help it along a little bit, I will. Um, if you guys are returning viewers to the channel, you know that I'm a relatively impatient person. And this does get hot enough that um, grabbing it directly out of the liquid, um, it kind of hurts to hold onto it a little bit. So just be aware of that. It does get warm enough that you might need some kind of additional towel or something like that to hang onto these things. All right, so I did help that along a little bit. Just took about 30 seconds there. Broke up some of the thicker deposits of grease and dirt that were left on there. But we're going to toss that back in here and run it for, uh, let's see, another probably another half an hour cycle. You know, I probably should have went the other way. There we go, right at 30. And now with our temp closer to the actual set point, I'm guessing this might work a little bit quicker now. Um, but I'll let it run for the full 30 minutes and see what happens. And then after that, I will break into the insides of the carbs and we'll go ahead and pull all the jets out and everything and then toss those in there for one more cycle. Okay, half an hour later, we're up to 54 degrees Celsius, so we're actually above our target set point. Let's see how these turned out. All right, that is like, that's like damn near perfect, I would say. I mean, there's a little bit of residue left on the intake side here. That actually looks like it's just leftover rubber from the boot that was degrading maybe, but that's kind of just brushing right off of there. I'm impressed for as nasty as these things were when they went in here. This is actually, this is pretty nice. I'm going to pull these out, drain them, let them sit, dry off, and then we'll uh, crack open the bowls and see how those look. And let's see how the one that was in the central machinery unit looks. That one's considerably hotter for some reason. Must have been closer to the heating element, I guess. But that one looks just as good. Wow, I can't believe that. Like, even the heads of the screws look brand new. There's a little bit of dirt left here and there, but for as bad as these were when they went in, I'm actually, I'm thoroughly impressed with this. And everything that's, that's left here, like I said, it's hot enough that it's kind of just rubbing right off. That one slide that was froze up that had that little bit of residue left on it. it. Looks like that got cleaned up. I don't see anything left on it here, so that's good news as well. All right, let's crack open a bowl and see how the inside looks. I'd imagine it's still going to be relatively dirty. Uh, not too bad on the inside of there. I've actually seen much, much worse. I wonder, I really wonder how much of that is due to the ultrasonic cleaner or if these were just decent, decent carbs. I can't imagine. I imagine some of that's got to be due to the, the ultrasonic cleaner. I mean, I know the degreaser got in here and everything. Um, obviously while it was running, because as you saw when I dumped it out, the insides were all full of fluid and whatnot. I am actually, if that's... I mean, if I managed to clean the inside of the bowls and everything without taking the bowls off, that's pretty crazy. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this thing actually did clean the inside, uh, inside of the bowls without taking the carbs apart. I just, I can't believe that the inside of the bowls would be this clean, judging by the way the outside of these carbs looked. And if that's the case, then, I mean, this is definitely worth the investment. I should have gotten one of these things a long time ago. 
Not sure how well you can see that, but there is a little bit of gunk down at the bottom of the bowl yet in the drain there. And I'm assuming that's probably what the rest of the inside of this carb looked like. But really hard to say. I guess I should have cracked the bowls open before, um, before I cleaned them. Just for a reference. I really didn't think it was going to clean the inside of the bowls though. That's, that's crazy. Alright, so that carb is completely disassembled now. I'm going to try and use this little cage guy here to uh, retain all the parts. And then we'll toss it back into the cleaner. And you know what? There's room enough in there yet. I'm going to disassemble the other one and we'll just do them both at the same time. Alright, let's get all this back in the cleaner. I am leaving the bowl gaskets on, um, hoping that it doesn't eat away the gaskets too much, if at all, um, but I guess we'll find out. And then I've got all the jets and all the tiny parts in this little cage, and it does have a little hook on it. It looks like you can just hook it to a handle like that, which is kind of nice so you don't lose it down in there. So I'm going to throw this back on one more half hour cycle, and this time I'm going to go out of the shop. <laughs> Because <laughs> like I said, the noise is a bit much if you're standing right next to it. So perfect time for me to go get some lunch and I'll catch up with you guys when it's all finished. All right, let's pull these back out and see how they turned out. Well, I gotta say I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with this thing. Looks like all of the small parts got just as clean as the outside of the carbs did. The ports look good. Didn't look like it did too much to the uh, bowl gaskets either, so that's a good thing, I think. Those look like those should be, still should be pretty uh, reusable. So I'm going to go ahead and give this just a good light coating of WD-40 and then slap it all back together. One down, one to go. And there's number two all finished up. So as a final test here, let's pop on the drain hose and see how this drain function works. And I thought that would fit tight enough that I wouldn't need the hose clamp, but it does not. So we're going to go ahead and toss it on there real quick as well. And one other thing I forgot to mention here, and I did not install this obviously, it does come with a little drain cap. This is supposed to go inside of the unit, um, push it down into the drain hole, and then that'll stop um, debris or small parts from draining down through the valve and into your waste bucket. Well, drain seems to work pretty good. Just a simple ball valve. Not really much that can go wrong there, I guess. And to be 100% honest with you, I could probably just reuse this water again. Looks like it's definitely still got enough degreaser left in it. Like that hasn't broken down too much, um, but just figured I would drain it out. It does get down below freezing out here at night, so it didn't want the unit to crack or anything like that. Not that I think it would, but you never know. And that is all the leftover crap that was in our carbs. There, and then just so you can see it, that is where the little drain cap goes down here. Right there. All right, guys, there you have it. Obviously, the true test is going to be when we install these back on the sled and see how she runs. Um, unfortunately, probably going to be a few weeks before she's ready for that. But all in all, I think a good test of the Viver unit, and I gotta say, I'm thoroughly impressed with it. I uh, wish I would have bought one quite a long time ago. Um, Price-wise, when I bought that Harbor Freight unit, I want to say it was around $80, and this one I paid $164, uh, including shipping on Amazon. So about twice the price of the Harbor Freight unit, but well worth it, in my opinion. That one really just doesn't seem to do anything at all. I mean, it does do a little bit of something, but um, nowhere near as impressive as what this one did. Some of the reviews that I read, like I said, were just reporting failure to function right out of the box. Other ones mentioned that the heat wasn't working or the lights weren't working, the unit was turning on, but it wasn't displaying anything, um, stuff like that. Thankfully, I've not had any of those problems. Obviously, you guys saw me take it right out of the box and it seems to be working flawlessly, so I have no complaints. Hopefully it continues to work that well. Uh, we'll just keep using it and see how long it lasts. If anything does fail, I will definitely update you guys and who knows, maybe we'll rip into it and try to fix it if it does break. Well, I think that's gonna do it. As always, if you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comments and we'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna get back to wrenching. Have a good one.